Aloha, Kelly. Aloha, Malia. Aloha, everyone. <laughs> Aloha, everyone. Um, we'll just take another minute or so, make sure everybody's um, on, and we'll get started. Thank you for joining us. Randy, can you highlight a doc right now, just so folks can see them while they're joining? Hey, Clara. There we are. Internal mic. Okay, Chuck. You can... <laughs> it's internal mic. Aloha, everyone. Kako. Aloha. 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 So glad you Aloha. 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 How's the weather at home? Are you keeping Lovely. warm for us? Yes. Got it. Got it. Sort of shining. 85 degrees. Ooh. It's only what, 38? Oh my God. 30. <coughs> okay. Okay. So uh, why don't we get started? Um, if people can meet their self, themselves, or if I can have some assistance with this, uh, we just folks. We have uh, two technicians. Okay. <laughs> so aloha and welcome. My name's Benton Kelly Pang. Um, I'm one of Doc's uh, many Hanai kids. Um, I'm also the co-founder for Ahui Malami Kolokahi, which you'll hear about today. Um, and I welcome you to our Zoom event, um, you know, celebrating sort of the legacy of uh, Doc and, and Clara Burroughs. Um, some general housekeeping, um, if you can keep yourself muted unless uh, you're speaking, we'll have some time at the end when you can give, you know, some mana'o to share with the group and with uh, Doc and Clara. The best way to view is to go into gallery so you can see everybody who's participating today. So I suggest you use a gallery view um, for today's event. Um, and it'd be nice to hear where you're calling in from. So if you can use the chat box, type in your name, where you're calling from, and um, maybe, maybe something about um, how you know either Doc or, or Clara. And this um, Zoom event is being recorded. So we will um, Take this and we'll provide it to Doc and Clara. And if you would like a copy of it, just email me and um, appreciate that. So um, again, we do have a Doc and Clara. They're in Leavenworth, Kansas. They're calling in from Leavenworth, Kansas, uh, 38 degrees there. Um, we are so happy that they're with us. Um, they recently left um, Hawaii to be with Kathy. And so, um, uh, that, that's why they're in Kansas. And so if you need their uh, new mailing address for your Christmas cards, you yeah. just email them. Okay. Yeah. And here's Kathy and Haley. Hey. Oh, Haley. Aloha. Yes, uh, Burroughs Ohana. At least some of it. <laughs> All right. Um, so with protocol, we're going to start off uh, with uh, an Oli Kahea, Sam Ohugan. And I'll give it over to Sam. Make sure you're uh, unmuted, please, first, and then um, can you unmute Sam. Mahalo. You have to sign in, no? Over the chat, put our names. Hello, Sam. Sam, I think you're unmuted. I am unmuted. I'm just waiting for. Uh, Puleka na na yulupo yulupo no la yuluma ma o kagalita ne keita ni kani o wa inewe te ni ita ne ne ye te ni ita ne ne ye. Oh, 
kailuaike oho kamala nae moe kala oke uki. I pui vai kale o kamanula e kuhia na oe vahine. A ole la, o a vahine mano ke i alai na vahine o kailua i kalai. Aloha no. Aloha, my name is Rosie Aligato. And um, on behalf of the planning committee, which consists of Randy Aki, Kelly Ipang, Beth Anderson, Lehua Kona Isaacs, Aurora Kagawa Viviani, and Lehua Abrigo, we welcome you to this. Uh, event celebrating Doc and we're so glad to be with Doc and Auntie Clara today and with each of you today. We really felt that it was our kuleana as haumana of Doc and Ahahui Malama Ikalokahi members to really honor and celebrate everything that he has given us throughout these many years. And we had actually planned a live tribute earlier, but the pandemic delayed that. We appreciate that we can now through the power of technology um, share and pay tribute to Doc and Clara via Zoom. Just to give you an idea of today's event, we're going to be starting, we're going to go through kind of a chronological story of, of, of Doc's um, impact on all of us, starting with experiences with Hui Lama and Kamehameha schools. We'll then have an overview of his work with Ahahui Malama Ikalokahi. We'll end with um, a charge from Doc and Auntie Clara as well as a very beautiful Meleinoa composed for this occasion um, by Uncle Kihei and will be performed by Auntie Mapuana de Silva. Uh, we will then have some ways that we can continue to build on the pathways that Doc and Auntie Clara have laid down. And then it will be an open ho'olauna for all of us to talk story and share with Doc some of our best memories with him. So mahalo for joining us today. So aloha mai kako. Uh, I'm Randy Aki. I um, will, hang on, let me spotlight myself so everybody can see me too. Hang on, oh, I don't know if I can. Okay, mahalo. So what we're going to do now is um, show a short video that Doc Burroughs uh, filmed with uh, Dr. Daviana McGregor talking about some of the origin of his work in conservation and ecology, as well as the origin of Hui Lama, which is a student organization that was uh, in force for many years at Kamehameha schools. So we'll watch that and then we'll talk a little bit after that. So this is an interview with Dr. Charles Chuck Burroughs for the Koholabe Aloha Aina Movement Oral History Project and today is Friday, October 18, 2019. Um, the time is around 2 o'clock p.m. and the interviewers are Dr. Daviana McGregor and Kamuela Werner. Uh, if, if you could please start by um, uh, stating your full name for us, please. My official name is Charles Peapel Makavalu Kekuelva Burroughs. Okay. Which, where were you in the order of siblings? Um? I was the firstborn, and since I was the firstborn, my Hawaiian uh, grandparents, uh, Charles and Caroline Kekuelva, hanaid me, and I lived with them. Uh, ever since, uh, I didn't live with my biological parents. And it wasn't until when she died when I was 10 years old that um, David and Harriet Burroughs adopted me as their son. And then where did you, um, where did you go to school? Elementary and intermediate? Yeah, um, Various schools I took uh, the test for Kamehameha School was accepted uh, as an eighth grader in 1947 at Kamehameha and went uh, to high school there and graduated in 1951 from Kamehameha. 
So from the 10th grade to the 12th grade, I attended the Humble Bible Training School, and that's when I met my uh, wife-to-be, bride-to-be, uh, sweetheart, you know, uh, as, uh, as the 10th grader. And uh, we were going together ever since from that time on. And, uh, and when my enlistment went up, I wanted to continue my education and this and in uh, in the sciences, and they said, well, uh, attend Linfield College in McMinnville, Oregon. They have a very good, you know, science department there. So uh, that's where I enrolled uh, to get my uh, uh, BA at Linfield College in biology and chemistry, uh, and that was where. The first courses in ecology uh, was was offered there, so so uh, I enjoyed that experience and that academic experience. And I was told that uh, it would be wise for me to get my doctors before I uh, turned 40 years old. Uh, and but I was in, interested in mediated instruction since I was a science teacher at Kamehameha Schools and. That's what we were doing, program instruction. And they told me one of the best schools uh, was, the, was at the Indiana University. So that's the reason why I went there. This was back in 1972-73, uh, uh, when I returned back to Kamehameha Schools and continued uh, my teaching career there until for 35 years until I retired in 2000. When I taught at Kamehameha Schools, I took that concept of Hu'i'i and formed Hu'i Lama, which incorporated the um, uh, science uh, teachings along with the Hawaiian uh, cultural practices, uh, Hu'i Lama. And it was part of the Sierra Club High School Hikers Program at that particular time. And that's when I also took that group to Kaolawi for the first time in the 1980s. In fact, even going, when Kaolawi was opened up, you know, to the public to attend back in 19, I think, uh, 78 to 79, was one of the first groups going there and that's when I got the idea to bring a youth group to Kaolawi at that particular time. And that's when I decided to incorporate the uh, Hawaiian cultural history and practices along with the natural history as well and started Hui Lama at that particular time. Uh, also there, um, the other advisors like Sigrid Southworth, who was a librarian in the uh, Hawaiian uh, uh, library at the uh, Kamehameha Schools, uh, became a co-advisor as well. Uh, the uh, chairperson of the uh, uh, science department became a co-advisor as well. And so we were able uh, to have the support of the uh, administration, the science department, uh, and, and even uh, the uh, board of trustees <coughs> uh, for uh, Hui Lama. Um, uh, so they were, uh, even on campus, you know, uh, we would uh, hike back of the campus uh, along the Eleva Kapalama Trail, the Five Mile Loop Trail, and that was our uh, starting efforts in the um, uh, restoration, the protection, the conservation of the Hawaiian trails back of the uh, school's campus. Uh, so I hope you guys all enjoyed a little bit of sort of history of how Hui Lama was founded. Next, what we'll move into is a video of Mike Naho'opi, uh, also sort of uh, giving some background on the uh, start of Hui Lama.
start. This is Mike na Ho'opi'i and go. <laughs> okay, so I guess you guys wanted to hear a story about Doc and how Doc influenced my life. Well, I guess the one, the biggest story with Doc, I, I first met Doc when I was uh, before high school. I was taking summer uh, biology and Doc was my biology teacher. And because of that, when the school year started, I couldn't take any other science class because those were all for upperclassmen, chemistry and physics. So I ended up taking environmental science, which Doc taught my freshman year. And he invited me to join a club called the Environmental Task Force. Hui Lama wasn't even created yet. And from that club, we used to go hiking with the boarders. And then we had uh, trips during spring break. And it was, wasn't until my sophomore year when we went to Lanai uh, and Molokai and we were looking for the land snails and cannibal caterpillars with Steve Montgomery that we came up with the name of Hui Lama for the club. And on the original t-shirt, if you ever look at the original logo for the club, there is a land snail shell. It was because we were hunting for land snails on Lanai, on the on Lanai Hale in the mist at night on the bottom of leaves and then we went to Molokai to uh, the bog uh, I think it's Pelikunu bog and also looking for land snails in that area so that's how land snail shell became such a prominent logo for us Mahalo, Mahalo Mike um, I'm now going to be sharing um, some memories from members of Huilama and I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Mr. Mills, Richard Mills, who served as an advisor for Hui Lama and shared the following thoughts. Chuck, Doc Burroughs and I were both teachers in the biology department at Kamehameha schools during the 1990s up until his retirement. He and Sigrid Southworth were the advisors for Hui Lama and together planned science-based excursions and hikes into native ecosystems around the Pacific. Soon after being hired, I heard about Hui Lama and found myself driving the bus, helping to plan outings and coordinating hikes with Sigrid and Doc. My wife Jan also assisted with packing and planning, but more often keeping my kids in line. Doc wore many hats, which was critical to making the club a success. He's going to share a little of the hats he wore. I'm going to share a little bit about the hats he wore here. First, Doc the teacher. He loved to talk when inspired and shared his passion with the students at every opportunity. He had a way to see beyond the isolated classroom experience. He was excited about how much could be learned through empirical observations. He trained students to see the world as interconnected through the web of life. He could also frustrate students by lecturing through much of the class and leaving them barely time to complete the lab assignment. Doc was also a salesman. All of these adventures required funding. Doc had to convince many doubters of the value he saw in environmental education. Doc was persuasive enough with administrators to get the financial side to partially fund the field studies and students had to fundraise for the rest. And finally, Doc the visionary. I recall sitting at one of our orientation meetings when Doc broke it to us all that we were going to dance and sing as part of the next field study. We were in shock because students in this group were pegged as scientists, not hula performers or practitioners, but Doc had made the connection between science and culture right then and there. We learned a number of chants, dances, and songs that were an integral part of Hui Lama. I think we all can remember that Doc, we had to love Doc's version of Teve Teve. He inspired a gift that we could share in the course of meeting other cultures. I'm going to pass it on to Aurora. Okay, um, I am reading um, a submission from Gail K or Kyoki Kanako Kai Jr. He wrote, My name is Kyoki Kanako Kai, Kamehameha class of 2000, and I was in Hui Lama for four years with folks like Ali'i Dudwa and Mel Park. I was one of the Kolohe boys from the Hui Lama trip to Tahiti and Rapa Nui, the one who did the paddling workshop and then flipped my overloaded canoe in the surf while everyone on the shore shook their heads in disappointment. I always lived for the outdoors, but I made very little of the enormous resources we were exposed to in Hui Lama. I antagonized Doc during our hikes and trips. In short, I was a disappointment. 
I eventually write in my path and I'm now 16 years into my career in conservation and I'm currently the field coordinator for TNC Maui. The memories and experiences I was blessed with through Doc helped steer me to a place that I think would make him proud. Most of my adult life has been dedicated to redeeming myself and claiming my kuleana. Over the last 10 years, I've mentored dozens of interns and led thousands of students on environmental experiential education and service learning trips to introduce them to the scientific method with a focus on place-based learning and connection. It took me a while to learn the things Doc was trying to teach me. Without his influence in my life, I would never have grown to care for Hawaii the way I do now, nor would I be dedicating my life to Malama Aina. Um, I'm next in the lineup too. So, so my um, I, I wrote this for Doc um, a couple years back, and I um, it still resonates. So, my name is Aurora Kagawa Viviani. I'm coming to school as class of '99, and was in Hui Lama from '96 to '99 um, with Travis Flazier, who I see here, Emerald Adams, um, and so my and Garrett Carpio. Um, my most formative Hui Lama experiences were trips to Lanai, Koho Olave, and Rapa Nui. And perhaps what I remember most is how Doc and Auntie Sigrid ensured we were prepared for every field study. In particular, for the Rapa Nui exchange, Doc engaged experts to teach us. Sergio Rapu, Mahina Rapu, Dr. Yoshiko Sinoto, um, Nainoa Thompson, P.K. Miller, Sam Gaughan, Steve Montgomery. Um, I apologize if I'm forgetting. Um, you know, I'm all of the upperclassmen here too. Um, as a high schooler, I didn't fully grasp the incredible access we had that Doc, you know, created for us. Um, and looking back, I realized how this intensive preparation before entering someplace is really a best practice in service learning and also a very Hawaiian thing to do. But at the time, it was just how Hui Lama operated. We prepared for months uh, for Rapa Nui, learning history, protocol, stars, ecology, we visited Wahipana, like Kaneilio, um, with Nainoa, had meetings um, in the evenings, in the afternoons, with homework and pre presentations. Um, we learned about the plants of Rapa Nui, the Moai, migrations, and on island, we helped outplant their once extinct Toromiro, cousin to our own Mamane, while members of our group chanted Eulu. In particular, I'm remembering Sam and Myra. Um, a park ranger talked about mycorrhizae there to help um, in, in talking about how they helped uh, Totomiro survive after outplanting. And that inspired my senior um, high school science for project focus on Koho Olave. I admire Doc's incredibly strong commitment to doing what's right. He isn't shy about taking risks, worried about being wrong or public opinion. Hawaiian or not, Doc puts you to work. Um, for him, people, environment, and work ethic are all mutually reinforcing and something I hope to emulate in my own, uh, my own work. Aloha, uh, it's Rosie Aligato again. I'm going to be sharing my kind of uh, mana'o or doc. So I was in Huilama from 1993 until 1996. And, you know, some of my cohort that I see online today are Melissa Kaustrom Beatty. We also had Russell Kaustrom. We have Kioni Kuoha, who I see. Of course, um, I knew Aurora. And one of the things that I think you cannot ever underestimate is the mark that Doc has made, the indelible mark that he's made on our Hawaii Conservation Society, our, our community today. You know, if you go across our communities and across our organizations and you look at who some of those leaders are, so many of them were in Huilama. And I, I just am so proud to have known them um, growing up in my formative years today. You look at Pai Pai Ohe'eia with Kili Kotubete, you know, you can look at the Nature Conservancy with Russell Kaustrom, you look at Papahano Mokuakea Cultural Group with Kioni Koha, um, a lot of those lessons we learned. Today, I am an Associate Professor of Oceanography at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and a huge part of my decision to pursue science as a career was my involvement in Huilama and the mentorship I received from Doc Burroughs. While my desire to understand Native Hawaiian ecosystems was first sparked by Dr. Lauren Gell through his outreach programs at public elementary schools, the realization that I could play a real role in protecting and restoring Hawaiian environmental spaces was nurtured and stoked by Doc. Doc had an extremely powerful approach to engaging young Hawaiians in environmental science. Just place us in the aina, in community, with people who know these spaces intimately. 
Pu'ukukui, Makaveli, Kuiki Gap, Moa Ula, Katabu, Alaska, Oparara and Tane Mahuta Aotearoa, Te Pito o Te Whenua i Rapanui. You know, as a high school student, I know I failed to grasp the totality of Ike that Doc had assembled for us with each trip. But what I did grasp was that to be an Indigenous scientist did not mean that my cultural grounding and my academic rigor were assumed to be binary, that I didn't have to choose, that I could achieve both. And now that I have the responsibility to mentor and advise my own haumana, the greatest lessons from Doc that I try to pass on are, one, before visiting a place, learn as much as possible about its people, their history and natural environment, and be humble and open to all that you can learn from them. Two, preparation and planning will make or break your work, so make a binder. <laughs> and three, others may not be able to see your vision, but it's worthwhile work to convey and pursue. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to um, Randy Quinones for more memories. Mahalo, Rosie. Aloha mai kako. Uh, I, am, I was the president of Hui Lama. Uh, I was a member from 1988 to 1990, and I was a president my senior year uh, when I graduated in 1990 at Kamehameha. And I think the lessons I learned from being in Hui Lama have helped me throughout my life. I'm certain, actually, that my college essay <clears throat> about our trip to Kalalao Valley and Kauai helped me get into college. Um, Doc was the first Native Hawaiian that I ever knew with a PhD ever in my life. And he helped foster a deep appreciation for Hawaii's environment and ecosystem. I've carried those lessons with me throughout my own life and career. And in those times when I was studying and getting my own PhD, I was often inspired by uh, those who had come before me, my Kumu and Kupuna, people like Doc Burroughs. I have many fond memories and life-changing experiences uh, as part of Hui Lama and knowing Doc Burroughs. One was, you know, we hiked the Grand Canyon. That just was unbelievable. We took a rafting trip down the San Juan River. We went to Rapa Nui uh, and helped in the restoration of an ahu there. Because of uh, Hui Lama and Doc's influence, I was inspired also to make my own path in, in a Hui Lama type uh, adventures. Over my life, I've worked for the Nature Conservancy in the Pacific in Palau. I worked as a national park ranger at Haleakala for a summer. I did a transfer term uh, studying conservation in Nairobi, Kenya. All of these things were inspired by the stuff that we had done in Hui Lama. And now as an economist uh, and a professor at UCLA, my continued interest in climate change and economic development, especially for indigenous peoples, all had a grounding in my, my time at Kamehameha and with Hui Lama. So I'm happy to be a part of Doc's legacy. And I just say holomamua, as Doc would say. And so it's also my privilege to also read a little excerpt from Aunt Sigrid Southworth, who served as a Hui Lama advisor with Doc Burroughs uh, at Kamehameha for decades and was an integral part of the group success and all of the wonderful adventures that they had uh, and we had jointly. So we'll read what she wrote uh, a little while ago. Charles Burroughs, Doc. He's utterly creative, boundless, energetic, collaborator, great lover of the world's environment and of our islands, networker, volunteer, arm twister, stubborn as the Dick Dickens, believer in experiential education, organized, organizer, tireless, and doesn't take no for an answer. All of this and so much more characterized the doc who I have known for 55 years. We both started at Kamehameha schools in 1964, but it wasn't until the 1970s that I really came to know doc. Originally, Hui Lama was known as the environmental task force, always thinking what could be better Doc at some point realized that a Hawaiian name would be so much more meaningful and appropriate. He came up with a new name, Hui Lama. At Kamehameha, it became a byword for caring for the environment. Hui means an organization and Lama, an endemic tree that we studied, and also the name of the Ahupua'a where Kamehameha Schools is located, Kapa Lama, where an enclosure, um, sorry, where an enclosure of Lama wood once provided protection for high ranking chiefs. Lama wood was used for was also used for torches to provide light. And by extension of that word, ma lama lama became a term for enlightenment. And the word ma lama means to take care of. Thus, the name hui lama perfectly expressed who we were and what we were doing. 
Over the years, Hui Lama grew and thrived. We hiked on Oahu monthly and camped out several times a year with students from Kamehameha uh, to the inner reaches of the island. In 1980, Doc engineered the first high school trip uh, to spend time uh, on Koho'olawe. It was a landmark trip resulting in repeated trips over the years. In 1989, Doc organized a rather bigger and more complex field study than we had previously undertaken. After the school year was over, a group of students and advisors, including scientists, made a three-week trip to the Grand Canyon and the Four Corners region of the Southwest. Before the trip, Doc spent many hours establishing connections with Navajo and Hopi leaders in the area. Uh, the trip in part became a cultural exchange. Doc is indeed a visionary and he makes things happen. Working with him as a co-advisor was one of the joys of my life and I will always miss the camaraderie and stimulation of Hui Lama. Thank you, Doc, for so many wonderful years. Mahalo. So you've heard from students of Doc some of the great work he's done um, at Kamehameha schools, but he also did a lot of work in the community. And um, Ahuhui Malami Kulokahi is one of those um, initiatives he and I, um, it's an idea we came up with in, in the early 90s. Um, at that time, we saw that there's no Hawaiian voice who were strong advocates in conservation. So we incorporated in 1996, uh, with board members, including myself, Doc, Shirley Naomi Garcia, and Mike Noho'opi'i as board directors. Meetings were held at Doc's house in Nu'uwanu, officially called Navai Ho'ola'i o Nu'uwanu. And many of our meetings um, had great meals um, cooked by Auntie Clara. Um, we started as an advocacy organization, submitting testimony to legislature on issues important to conservation, with Hawaiian conservation values as our guide. One of our first events was a hula conference, Nonapua o Kahalau Hula, for the flowers of the hula, which brought together kumuhula and conservationists to discuss how we can continue to use our native forest for lei while maintaining its integrity for future generations. Shortly thereafter, we began to work at Napuhaku Hawahine, a site on the fringes of Kauainui conducting native plant restoration, wetland restoration, and outreach to the community. We now had a place to work, a place to share, a place to care for, malama, and work continues to this day. And we'll show you now a video of the current president, uh, Lihua Kona Isaacs, talking about some of the work at Napohaku Ohawahine. native uh, ecosystem. So that was in the 90s, and uh, that was the very beginnings of Ahahui Malama Ikalokahi. Uh, Doc Burroughs was the founder. Uh, I was not there at the very beginning, but I joined Ahahui uh, several years after they, a couple of years after they started, and became involved in Kavainui. And as we have spent time here, um, the relationship between myself and the land, the Aina, has become more clear. Uh, and our kuleana, our obligation, our responsibility to steward the land has become my own personal kuleana as well. So I'm here now fulfilling that responsibility. If you look around, around the entire rim of Kavainui, and you look at the interior parts of Kavainui right now, there is very little evidence of uh, a native lowland forest, a, a true native lowland forest. You're only really going to find that here at Napuhaku and work we've done at Ulupo in uh, Lo'i. Uh, but everything you see here, almost everything you see here is an invasive uh, plant. And our, our vision is to, well, let me say the marsh is at great risk right now. It is at great risk you have that floating mat out there. That floating mat is about six feet thick. And on that floating mat, uh, trees are starting to uh, spread. That is a real threat to Kavainui. Uh, that floating mat needs to be removed. The trees need to be removed. And we don't remove those trees. In 10 years, 15 years, we're going to have a swamp. We're not going to have what's called a marsh, which is mainly, mainly grasses. We're going to have a swamp 
which is predominantly trees. So we're at great risk on the interior of Kavainui. We're at great risk on the perimeter of Kavainui. So what you see here, uh, the vision for Kavainui is to look at what we've done at Napuhaku. These are all native uh, plants here. They've matured over the years, so we have the different layers of canopies of a forest. We have the high canopy, the lower canopy, brush, ground cover. Uh, to see that environment all the way around the rim. So we would like to be able to be unleashed and to lead the community in that effort to restore um, the entire perimeter of Kavainui. Uh, on the interior of Kavainui, uh, what we need to do is to, again, remove those um, invasive species. This uh, round circle you see here, that is growing very quickly. That is increasing in diameter very, very quickly. That's Egyptian uh, papyrus. And that is another threat too. And it's actually about eight feet tall. You can't tell from here, but it is, it's eight feet tall. That is a threat. We need to clear the mat. We need to clear out the invasive species. We need to get rid of the trees. And we need to restore uh, both the bird ponds, which, which uh, uh, Dofa has already started to do. Uh, we have created our own bird habitat down here, uh, and we have uh, native birds in the bird habitat. Uh, but we'd also like to restore the local ia, the fish pond. This was one, at one time uh, the largest, well, one of the largest fish ponds in all of Hawaii. Uh, we would like to take a portion, and uh, exactly which portion that is needs to be determined through a kuka kuka discussion amongst. Uh, both the cultural practitioners and the scientists. Okay, that was um, recorded some years ago. Uh, and uh, we know that one of the things that um, was really important to Doc, and we have been working for 10 years along with the De Silva's and other um, cultural practitioners in our community for the um, Kavainui Hamakua Complex Master Plan. Uh, and I think Doc was originally involved in 1994. Uh, then uh, 10 years ago, we started it up again. Uh, and I will tell you that uh, Doc is a really tough guy. I mean, we had some, we had some opposition in these public meetings and um, uh, Doc held his ground. Uh, I took some uh, hits. Uh, I, I think all of us that were there took some hits from the spin uh, that was being generated through the community about us creating a Disney-like uh, feature here at uh, Napuaku, Ulupo, all of these areas, or a Polynesian cultural um, kind of environment here where we'd have buses of tourists coming in, et cetera. So there's a lot of um, spin in our community. Um, but uh, Doc held firm, uh, I know I held firm, but that's one of the great achievements because Doc, I think as you know, uh, and everybody else is that it's final, final signed off. But um, Mike, um, Dave Smith, told me it's mostly an uh, aspirational plan because there's no funding due to COVID. But if it's signed off, that doesn't mean that we can't get in there. They may not have the money, but we could get in there to be, to be determined. Okay, but um, that, that's one, I think, of the really great accomplishments of Doc is going from the early days, marshalling this through and getting it to the point where uh, Governor Ige signed off on the environmental impact statement. Uh, so, Doc, that's one of uh, the tasks, objectives that you set for us, and we'll certainly will be implementing, executing where we can for the benefit of our Aupua and the benefit of Kavainui to um, expand, expand our, our work. And um, the, I think the next thing, I'm sorry, I, I think this was the uh, mentoring part, uh, and I just want to say about mentoring. Um, that all of us that work around Kavainui, just by the fact that you have young people working with you, you are, we are mentors. Um, but what, what I see about mentors is, uh, and Doc was my mentor, 
they bring you up to a certain level of EQ or knowledge. And at some point, you're cut off because you're ready to be cut off, right? I think, I think that would be the same with Hula and Uniki, um, that you are ready to stand on your own. And so I take Doc's good lessons, I bring them forward, I work with the youth, and we continue uh, Doc's uh, legacy here. His legacy is far reaching, goes way back, and it's far reaching forward as well. So um, I'll conclude this portion uh, and we'll move to the next portion, um, Aurora. Or Randy. So one of the very important things that we need to do uh, as a group and as individuals and as Kanaka Maoli or Hawaiians uh, is to mentor our youth. Mentoring youth is very, very important because what we do is pass uh, a lot of the cultural knowledge, but the important aspect is understanding that we are not separate from the land. We are part of the land. We are part of that cycle. We are part of the environment uh, and the forest that we work in. We work amongst our relations. So we are deeply connected to these lands. Uh, and it's one thing that youth need to understand is we're not doing landscaping work. Uh, we're not doing gardening work out in the, in the uh, forest. What we are doing through Restoring the forest is restoring our, our lands, restoring the spirit of our ancestors. We are amongst our ancestors. We walk the lands that they walked. Uh, and that's an important aspect that sets us apart from environmental groups. Often uh, we are in alignment with environmental groups and sometimes we're at heads with environmental groups because we see ourselves as always being on those lands and not gazing from afar. Uh, the youth we work with are community school, community groups, uh, schools, scouts, churches, individual citizens of this community, uh, as well as adults. But passing this torch and knowledge and perspective and understanding is very important uh, to pass on to our youth. They, they understand that our people thrived here. We just didn't survive here. We thrived here through... Uh, over a thousand years of producing um, foods and items for cultural uh, implements and protein as in fish ponds for a healthy, reliable, sustainable, tasty source of protein. Uh, we had kalo or taro across these lands. We had sweet potato or walla across these lands. It was known as the fat lands, aina momona, the fat lands or the very productive lands. Uh, and you're just starting to see that now as uh, all of us work on transforming the land back to Aina, um, we begin to see these shifts in what is now growing out of the Aina as opposed to uh, alien invasive species. Um, I think one got dropped off of that. Um, Lehua, is this the one with the uh, video of the Lohuia? Okay, okay, one got dropped off at the end, uh, which I was going to pick up on, but um, uh, this is Doc's long, long legacy through all of this. And we will be ever forever grateful to Doc for the time that he devoted, his life that he devoted uh, to stewardship and youth and bringing people up and he is, and he's a, he's a hard pusher in a positive way. I mean, he really gets you going. And Doc had every, in his mind, he has got every challenge. He sees it clearly. He knows where we need, need to go. Um, and uh, we go there. But um, uh, th that is his gift. And he, he is still thinking that way um, in, in terms of his message and providing a message for the future. Uh, it has been my pleasure. I'm glad to be born at this time and gone through this uh, process with Doc and all the other stewards of the Aina. And, um, and that includes uh, around Ulupo, Kaleo folks around Ulupo. And I know Hui uh, Oko'olau is working on the other side. There's a lot of energy 
and a lot of um, uh, Malama Aina work going on. But um, Doc was that like that firestorm at the very early uh, years of our work. And also Clara, um, who uh, Rosie mentioned in one of her readings, every time we show up for a Sunday a board meeting, there was Doc and Clara cooking breakfast for us, scrambled eggs, pork, uh, corned beef hash, uh, Portuguese sausage, all kinds of great foods. And we would eat and sort of, it was like a fellowship before we actually started the meeting. And it was good sharing a meal with all my associates in those days and, um, and then having that meeting. Uh, and the meetings would often go long because Doc's agenda was long, uh, but Doc knew what was happening around here. And the other thing is that um, uh, all our service projects, when Doc was leading our service projects, uh, he would always feed everybody at the end and he'd open up his hatchback uh, and he'd invite everybody to come and get some food. And there were the sandwiches all laid out and made by Auntie Clara. I mean, that was just how he rolled and how he operated. Uh, take care of everybody. We work hard, but we were fed hard, we're cared for hard, and we are safe. Ah, okay. This is this is the okay. Go ahead, go ahead. I really wanted to show the exuberant energy of the youth. And I think what's important here is um, that this, this represents, you know, Buckminster Fuller, he created this word synergy where two plus two equals six, not four. So that's a demonstration of many hands make the, the work light. And this youth group was both from Les Jardins Wild Kids and the Nalo group that's out of um, uh, Herb Lee's pack led by uh, uh, Tanning, um, oh, me, I'm sorry, I'm messing that up. I will get his name right, I know it all the time. But, but that was that group. And when the two combined, um, Nalo came later, oh, it just exploded into balls of energy. We got so much work done in clearing out the um, water hyacinth. Here's a picture of uh, was Car uh, Clara, now, now, what is important here for all to know uh, as Doc and, and Clara have departed, and that's her daughter, Kathy, is that they're at the Overlook now. And that tree that you saw Clara in front of, that is a huge Alahe'e tree. That's like the biggest Alahe'e tree that we have at Napawaku right there. And that tree was planted in memory of their son, um, David, David Burroughs when he passed away. And that tree is towering. And what you see here is, and you'll see in a moment, Doc is bending over watering. Doc is bending over watering the two ohialehua uh, that he blessed. And we're, we're like there, he's right there. And maybe you can see the containers, beautiful ohialehua that are being protected from direct sunlight by their son David's limbs or arms. It's really, this was not intended. It, it just happened that way. And aloha keakua, for, for letting that happen that way. So when we go up to uh, the Overlook in Napuhaku, those plants will be right there. The Hale A already well established and the Ohialehua will be established. They're doing very well. Uh, and there it is again. So uh, I think I can conclude my part uh, with, with all of this and just say, uh, 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 we keep on keeping on and never give up, never give up. That's Doc's lesson. He, he never gave up. He was the energizer bunny. Just keep on going. Aloha, ahui ho. Mahalo leho kona. Uh, next, uh, we'll have a message that Doc and Auntie Clara uh, put together for us uh, to tell us about their wishes and their desires for where we as Hawaiians and, and, and people living in Hawaii, uh, should go in the future. Aloha kakou, 
Over 25 years ago, I, with Denton Ke'ali Pang, co-founded Ahuhui Manama Ikalokahi, or AML, an organization with a mission to develop, promote, and practice a native Hawaiian conservation ethic relevant to our times and responsible to both Hawaiian culture and science. This ethic is protective of natural culture and natural resources, and it's expressed through research, education, and active stewardship. However, my interest and passion for conservation began by 36 years teaching science at the Kamehameha schools. As an educator, I recognize Kwainu Marsh as an important cultural and natural resource where we would often take my hamana as well as those who were not in my classes to experience the biological, environmental, and marine sciences. And often on these excursions, I invited experts and scientists to share their manao and ike, such as Sam Ookan, Steve Montgomery, and even Nainoa Thompson. Many memories come to my mind uh, of the trip taking with community schools, hiking and environmental science club, Huin Lama, named after the Lama tree that I established um, at uh, uh, Napohaku. Although most of the trips were to Napohaku, Ohawahini, where students contracted trails and began removing invasive vegetation. Many were to the neighbor islands and various regions of the world, such as Russia, Easter Island, Aotearoa, and the continent with indigenous peoples. It is my hope, science and Hulama Halnama, wherever you are, that your lived experiences in caring for the Aina are helping you find ways to serve, to put into action your Ike or knowledge as volunteers or EV or active members. Eventually, Hui Lama evolved into AML, Ahu Hui Malama Ikalokai, with community partnerships such as the Department of Natural Resources or DLNR, State Parks, and the Division of Forestry, DOFA, in the conservation and restoration of sites, primarily in Kwanui and the Monowili areas. Even achieving a major goal last fall with the completion of the Kwanui Master Plan's final environmental impact statement. The long process of updating the original 1994 master plan that's now being implemented to the nonprofits, such as the Kailua Homeland City Club, Kailua Kalana, and AML. Most recently, Hui Manawili Kwainui, composed of the Kailua Hawaiian organizations and Manawili residents has collaborated with the with the with Covert Kalama ED of HRT Weinberg Foundation to acquire about 900 acres of their Manawili land holdings to protect, conserve the cultural and natural resources and growing food and, and again, providing educational programs in this region. This would not have been possible without the concur of individuals 
and community groups. Regretfully, time only loss or brief mention of these a few of them besides Ihoi Malama Kai, the Kali Warring Sibika, Kaulu Kalani, Winter Wine Sea, various schools such as uh, Le Jardin, Kainalu, uh, University of uh, Manoa, uh, Hawaii Pacific University, Kamehameha, and Indians, such as the Crossroads, uh, the Daybreak, CCU, Christ Church Uniting, the Methodist Lutheran Episcopal Churches, each expressing the care of creation to spiritual and and or their religious perspective. It is your commit distance today to take action by volunteering to work directly in the INA or by supporting organizations concerned about the care of creation in order for positive changes to take place. That indeed is my challenge, my message to all of you, no matter where you reside. I especially want to thank, thank Sigrid Southworth, who advised Hulama, Sigrid, your leadership through these many years made for his success. Mahalo Nui Noa for hanging in there with me. The Luakona Isaacs, Mahalo Nui Noa for accepting and providing outstanding leadership for AMNL and for the projects in which you continue engaging to accomplish its mission. And the Luakona and community members I deeply honored in sending my hall to each of you for all you have done to make this Zoom celebration a reality, a most memorable event for me and my Ohana. Now to my strongest supporter of six, six years, my wife, Clara, whom I asked to share closing thoughts. Mahalo, Chuck. Aloha, Kako. Yes, it is the spirit, the guidance from your tutu wahine, Caroline Kekueva, who blessed you with your Hawaiian name, Pe'a Pe'a Makavalu, a visionary. She must have observed you during the 10 years as your Hanai tutu. Being led by Keakua, she envisioned you carrying on the vision for the restoration of Kauai Nui Marsh, where Kanaka Maui had come and built a thriving, sustainable Ahapua'a hundreds of years ago. Seeing the work being done by Kaulu Akalana and Ahahui in the Lo'i today with Keiki and volunteers, I know it is truly the amazing model of sustainability that you have shared can be replicated throughout communities here and abroad. You embraced that vision and with others who also shared your vision before and now going forward, you carried on in the many ways through the years, especially with your haumana and those giving of yourselves in the various organizations you founded or in which you participated. In closing, I invite you to reflect upon one thought that comes to my mind from the eulogy shared by pastors in California and at Kauaiha'o Church in celebration of the life of our beloved son, David Allen Opu'ulani, a classmate for some of you here today. It's titled, a life well lived. In essence, it is not the length of our days, in other words, how long we each live, but the depth of our days, how well, how deeply we live each day. With Chuck, I now ask every one of you, in what ways are you adding to your days to Malama? Are you adding depth to your days to Malama? 
to care for all creation. This begins with the choices you make. First, for your own self-care, for your health, so that you can be a blessing to others as you live your life each day with purpose and passion. Make the commitment, if you have not already done so, to aloha, to malama, restore, and maintain the aina, the honua, for our keiki, the future for all of us. As Chucks also mentioned, take action now. Use your muscles, your sweat in the aina. Mahalo lehua kona ame kaleo for those words. Use your voice to advocate, to accept being oivu by providing leadership for systemic changes. <laughs> Contribute your monetary resources. And most importantly, be the pono model. Provide the experience for your keiki, for the malama and care of all creation so that they will be able to carry forth your legacy of a life well lived in the years ahead. To our creator, Keakua, we uplift grateful prayers for each of you as you look inward in order to go forward, to live as the poet Mary Oliver says, your one and only wild life. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. That was beautiful. Amen. Aoya. I don't know if there are any more words that can be said, and yet we have more. Um, at this time, it's my great honor to introduce to you all um, Auntie Mapu and Uncle Kihei De Silva, who are Kupa Aina of Kailua. Uh, as many of you know, Auntie is the renowned Kumuhula of Halau Mohala Ilima, and Uncle is, of course, a gifted composer, historian, and educator. For many years, they've taken up the kuleana in restoring Ulupoheao and the Kauainui marshland through Hika'alani. Their organization which seeks to reestablish centers of stewardship and learning at stored places in the Ahupua of Kailua and where we can again gather as Hawaiians did to practice the culture that sustains us and defines us. So um, now um, to share a makana, aloha, uh, are the disavots. Hmm? Anakala, you're on. Okay. Um, this is a Mele Noa, a name chant. Normally, these are written for single people, but you cannot say Doc without thinking Clara and without, without knowing how important the two of them are together. So this is a mele noa for Pepe Amakavalu and his, and his amazing wife, Kalai. Um, this mele noa follows the water because in everything that Doc has said to us and challenged us with and beaten us over the head with is that you cannot have a single focus point. If we're interested in Ulupo, he says, well, that's not all of the water. If we're interested in Kauai Nui, he says, that's not all of the water. You've got to follow the water. You've got to go up all the way into Mount Wili Valley. You have to follow it all the way down to Kailua Bay. It's when you see the big picture and all the connections that you then are thinking properly, that you then have your sights properly calibrated. So this mele begins with uh, two springs, the water of Pikuakea and Ainoni, deep in Mount Wili Valley. It follows that water down through the streams, Maunawili and Kahaniki streams, into Kauainui, into the presence of Hawahine, the Mo'o guardian of our, of our, uh, of our Kauainui. Goes to Ulupo, celebrates the uh, husband and wife who were responsible for calling the Menehune to build Ulupo Heiau. Then it goes down to Waiawea, which is the Makaha of Kawainui and a source also 
of great ties to our Aina. And finally, the chant goes down to um, what is called <clears throat> Kanuku o, o um, Kaelepulu, or otherwise Komukava'a, which is the, the mouth of Kaelepulu stream, Kailua Bay. In each of those verses, we have pairings, male and female. Um, the idea is these are our ancestors. These are our um, sources of our of water, sources of our understanding and our wealth and our love. And of course, by association, the pairings uh, indicate in a, in a hopefully subtle way, the, the pairing of Doc and Clara and the, the results of all of their um, their efforts and their aloha. The, the last verse of the song uh, is, not a, is not a place uh, verse. It says, ma puna puna mayana ke aloha, love bubbles up and flows. Maya o hulu kupuna maino from my cherished hulu kupuna, Doc and Clara. Iolai na kini o kailua in order that the kini of kailua, the citizens, the multitudes, will live. It gives me great pleasure to, to offer this chant to our hulu kupuna. Hulu kupuna means cherished, valued, loved ancestors in Doc and Clara and in those pairs who precede them. Uh, the mele that we composed is inspired because mele should all be inspired by something that came before, inspired by Kavana Pukui and Anti Maka Bacon's Waibu Ki Ki, which is a lullaby composed for hava drinking, relaxing, and finding peace. The melody you might recognize as uh, Red River Valley. So uh, with that, I, I hand over the mele to my wife who was gonna just ole it, but I think she has a hula kuhilima, a, a gesture hula to go with it. So mahalo nui, aloha nui. Rosie? Yes? You're spotlighted on my screen. Can they spotlight oh. me? I will remove my, I will, I yeah, think you are you are you are spotlighted. Really? On my on my screen, yes. Okay, because you I don't see myself on my screen. We all see you though. Okay. You look beautiful. I want to make sure that everybody. <laughs> that she's not off in the <laughs> Sorry. <corner somewhere>. <laughs> <laughs> because this this um, started as an ole. There we go. There we go. Now I can see it. It started as as an ole, and it it is actually has ended up as a melehula. So I want to make sure. You can see this melehuna, it's a hula kuhilima. I hemelehulu no na kupuna. No kanu avai olu ke aloha. I know ni me pikoa ke a ika uka oka hini hini ula. No kawai huia nu hea ke aloha. Mau na wili me kahana iki ike aloha ua hine. No kawai papo haku ke aloha. Kahihi ku me kahano aneva ina lauli po ulu po no kai ki o vaiali i ke aloha moani hi me ko o ko o ke ki a e ku o vai no kanu kumuli vai ke aloha ke ohola me ke aka o ku ika ehu kai o komokava ma puna puna mai ana ko aloha Maya ule ku 
kuna maino iola aina kini o kailua he no no pe a pe makavalu me kala e dark and clara burles Mahalo, mahalo nui, mapuana and kiwi. Mahalo. So, so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Kike and mapuana. <laughs> okay. It's okay. So there are many different organizations that Doc and Clara have been a part of. Um, and there are organizations by which you can um, support either through HANA, um, or through other means. And so um, we have a list of some of the organizations and, and their websites. Um, and feel free to contact them and ask how you can kokua. Um, you've heard Ahuhui Malami Kolokahi being mentioned, um, Kaulua Kalana doing work at Ulupo Heiau. There's also a scholarship that the Kailo Hawaiian Civic Club has set up for uh, Doc and Clara. So you can donate to the Kailo Hawaiian Civic Club to support that scholarship. There's also a scholarship with the Pauahi Foundation. And you'll have to scroll down and you'll, it's under Charles PMK Burroughs slash Hui Lama slash science. But go to the Pauahi Foundation and you can make a donation to that fund. And then also there's the Church of the Crossroads, which has been, you know, um, one of the main churches that Doc and Clara um, have been going to and supporting. So they have a peace, justice, and stewardship of creation um, sort of committee or program. And so donating to that organization or um, attending the church and being a part of that committee, you know, you would be fulfilling, again, the legacy of, of, of Doc and Clara. So, Whatever way you want to, um, Kokua, these are some examples. Um, I just wanted to provide you uh, some of the list of names and some of their websites. Um, so um, we do have a, a little more time uh, to close. We have, um, you know, Doc is known to have, uh, uh, if I can, you know, be, be a little bit um, risque here. Doc has uh, three, three, four wives. Doc has Auntie Clara. Doc has Sigrid Southworth, who helped them at the Kamehameha Schools Hui Lama. He has a science teacher, Gail Ishimoto, who helped Doc with his, the science curriculum at Kamehameha Schools. And then in Kailua, he has Beth Anderson. And Beth Anderson is, is wife number four. Um, so uh, Beth uh, has, has opportunity now. She wanted to kind of give her mahalo um, as, as uh, showing her appreciation to what she's learned. Um, these many years working with, with Doc. Go ahead, Beth. Benton, Benton, excuse me, it's Mapuana. Yes, Mapuana. I just want to let Doc and Clara know and everyone know that the current recipient, one of the, cur the, the current Robert. recipient of the Doc and Clara Burroughs Scholarship is the grandson of Muriel Cito. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yes. And for those who don't know, Muriel Cito was very instrumental in some of the site names and protection of, of the areas around Kauai Nui. Um, well, that, that's, that's so nice. Um, yeah, his name is um, Sonny Dryden, who, uh, who ehu ikapono Sito Myers. And he's a senior at Stanford. And we mahalo Muriel Sito for establishing the Ramsar Foundation. <laughs> uh, let's see, a wetlands of international importance and distinction. Yes. He should be proud of his. Yes. You too. And after he graduates, he's going to come home and attend the university and he gets his master's in Hawaiian language. Wonderful. That's Thank very you. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Thank you Benton. Sure. Okay. Beth, did you want me to run your your tribute? Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah, Beth pre-recorded, um, so I can I can run that now.
Sorry, it's going to take me a second juggling windows. Um, um, so it might be 30 seconds. Would you rather just say it yourself or are you? Uh, I don't. I'd okay. rather if you could just play it. Okay. <laughs> okay. But okay. in the meantime, can you um, do our maybe our mahalos and acknowledgments? Sure. Um, yeah, I just, hello, everybody. Um, just on behalf of myself and the rest of the planning committee, uh, thanks to all of you for attending today. And I would like to acknowledge and thank the UH Manoa Center for Oral History, Lehua Brigo and Lehua Kona for the video footage of Doc. and. Mahalo to Ikaika Bernaldez for the, all the video, video editing work he did. And this concludes the formal part of our program and everyone's invited to chat with Doc and Ohana now. So mahalo. And I think we'll kick off the whole launa portion. Um, maybe if Aurora's, if you guys wanted to kind of spend a little bit of time thinking about what you might want to say to Doc, um, you know, and we're going to invite you to um, unmute yourselves. Uh, we can we can spotlight you. But um, Aurora, is Beth's tribute uh, keyed up and ready? I just leave it. Okay. Hello. Hello, Doc. Thanks for being such a good friend all of these years. I've enjoyed working with you on projects, ideas, and editorials. We made it big on that last one, the New York Times. When I first met you, I heard all these nicknames, Lord of the Marsh, the Energizer Bunny. It wasn't long until I found out what all that was about. And it was a good thing. Um, your hard work, persistence, and tenacity is on protecting the Ina has just been a lesson for all of us. And your dedication and legacy will be long lived. Uh, so thank you for that, and we will always feel your presence in the Kailua Aupuaha. Mahalo, mahalo, Beth. Um, at this time, if anybody want would like to, you know, turn on your video or unmute yourselves. This is the time that we've kind of reserved for us all to kind of just talk story with Doc and Auntie Clara. Um, as Kelly suggested, maybe putting us on gallery might be a good way. You can use the raise hand feature and then I'm happy to um, spotlight you if you wanted to say anything. I see lots of um, friends and relatives here, so please just let me know. Hey, Lee. Can you hear me? Aloha, Haley. Hi, John. Do you want to talk? Well, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were a second. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, Doc, Clara, that's you know, on uh, behalf of high school hikers, it's a little hard. Yeah, I, I think about the program, and it was you and everyone else, but Oh, um, we're still here. You no, know, we still keep our hiking program together. Um, but my our earliest days, Adeline, I mean, we'll always be remembering the time we spent with you. The hikes, the, the camps. I think the first time I first time we met Doc was uh, the college camp in 1979. I think we were at uh, Home Lenny. <laughs> the first thing he said to me, I think it was like 11 o'clock at night, it was like, shut up and go to sleep <laughs> and then i'm like who's that and then mark he's like that's the advisor from commandment schools <laughs> but thank you for everything uh for your time with us for your lessons for for flying the flag for high school hikers and for being a part of the program and this for being our thank friends you. for all these years love you both and best wishes for your future wherever you are. Aloha no. Love you. Mahalo, John and Pauline. Okay, anybody else want to go?
Hello. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, uh, I'll do David Turner and then Kalani. Mahalo, Rosie. Um, Clara, mm -hmm. the first time that you and I met um, at Crossroads, you, we were talking about membership, and you just reached across the table and Talk did what I know it. everyone else experienced with you. you and they you looked to... me in the eye, and you made uh, it very clear that this thing, whatever it was that we were talking about, was essential. Um, and it was filled with the sense of love and the sense of aloha. It was the counterpart to sitting next to Doc at a meeting in which Doc always had something that he knew you had to do. And if you didn't say yes, he would just wear you down. The two of you approached us all in different ways, one with that gentle touch that you couldn't say no to, and one with that oh indomitable spirit that you couldn't say no to. And the reality is we at Church of the Crossroads are forever indebted to that spirit from both of you. And I know there are many crossroaders that are here on this call. Um, we will continue your gifts there at the church and we will continue to find ways to try and find ways to get us there in that Honolulu side to connect with the Kailua Ahupua as well and the work that you've done. So mahalo, Doc and Clara. It is such a gift and such an honor to have been able to share these last four years as your kahu and to share many more years as your friend. Mahalo, mahalo nui. Mahalo, Chad. Aloha, Doc, Auntie Clara. So good to see you folks and everyone else on the call this morning. I just wanted to add my little mahalo and aloha to you folks. Um, I'm so grateful that we have this opportunity now uh, to tell you these things and to tell you how much we love you and thank you for all the work that you have done and continue to do. And also uh, for your words earlier and inspiring us to do more and to keep going. And so I just wanted to say aloha and so much love to you folks and big, big virtual hugs. Aloha. Aloha. Oh, there's Bootsy. Aloha, my dear, dear brother and sister. I, on behalf of our family, I just want you to know that we are overflowing with aloha and pride and so grateful to, to have been in the family and enjoying so many wonderful events together, as all at your house, I might add. I was fortunate to marry Clara's brother. And um, we always had a home in Honolulu when we came home. For many years, we lived in California as he was working there. And, and so um, we always came home to a warm, wonderful, home full of love and so welcoming and on all kind food too. So thank you, thank you. I can't tell you how proud I am and we all are of you Chuck and you Clara for all that you've done in teaching our Kiki of Hawaii Nei. It's it's just um, exemplary kind of teaching, one that we kupuna just appreciate so much in passing on the ike of our kupuna, okeawihala, our ancestors of the past. So thank you very much. And mahalo, so Nui. All of you, mahalo. You're ready to go. I am. Okay. Um, I don't think that Dr. Clara will not like what I'm about to share, but it's good. It's very good. But uh, in, in 2000, I mean, in, in, yeah, in 2019, um, Doc announced to me that he was diagnosed with cancer. And at that time, in 2019, he was told he had six months to live. And uh, talking about Doc and Energizer Bunny, um, 
Doc is here with us like two years later. He's lived far beyond anybody's expectation. Um, and that's the kind of resilience. And a lot of us were associating with Doc before they left. You could see his vibrance and his strength. He was going through chemotherapy therapy, and that kind of knocked him down a little bit. But in a couple of days, he's back up. Um, and so that ability to outlive that prognosis. And also when Doc was prognosed, he came out with me with a weed whacker and we were clearing for the geology tour. I think Doc remembers that. We were spinning weed whackers out uh, at, alongside each tree and the police stopped and said, what are you guys doing? And uh, oh, we're just, you know, clearing the sidewalk. And, uh, but Doc was out there with the, uh, with his weed whacker too. So he just, uh, th that's important for everybody to know. He, he's still with us, he's fighting strong. Uh, aloha, Doc. Aloha, Clara. Aloha, Doc. Thank you. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> aloha, Nani. Your turn. Hi, I'm... Is this working? Um, I'm technologically challenged, so I'm doing my best. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I'm not a person who's at a lack of words. I'm just having a little trouble. Um, Jack and Clara, to me, they're like inseparable. And um, I was on the board of directors of Ahaui Malama Kalokahi for the first 10 years, the first decade. And the reason I resigned and left is because I got married. And I got married in Chuck and Clara's backyard. Very, very tiny, tiny ceremony, just, um, you know, uh, very few people. And, um, you know, what everyone else has said is, you know, we were going to go out to dinner afterwards. We reserved part, you know, a place at a restaurant. But Clara put out this huge, table with wonderful, delicious, fantastic snacks. And, and I, I, I'm surprised anybody ate dinner because I mean, and that was just them. Um, um, and, I, and I said to Clara how much I, you know, how much I admired her. And she was my role model for what um, a wife and mother and independent woman should be. But, you know, they're just, and that's part of it, was the fact that they were so inseparable and always, you know, um, making the other one better and enabling the other one and supporting the other one. And I want you to know that um, I'm such a much better person for knowing both of you. But Clara, you're my role model. And... <laughs> I won't come close, but at least I have a good role model. And thank you both so much. I'm so glad you're in my life. Mahalo, Nani. <laughs> and actually, I don't know, you know, when we were married 50 years, we were on a cruise and we met a young couple who are just married and they heard that we were celebrating 50 years of marriage and that's 16 years ago. And the young man says, tell us the secret of staying married so long. And Chuck, what was your answer? Well, we always have interests in common. <laughs> but he said, stay out of each other's way. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so from then on, I said, I'm just staying out of each other, your way. But the interesting thing is that I would have been, you know, the language to mean the same thing, but a lot more words to it. But we didn't try to change each other. We were the persons we were meant to be. But it is in that trusting relationship, as with all of you in your work, for the care of all creation, that is what it is about, the relationship of trust going forward. So mahalo to each of you today. It's just overwhelming. And we, we can't thank you enough for, well, I learned from my sister-in-law, Halani, you know, 
she lived in the continent for over 20 years and she learns, knows the Hawaiian language. I am now learning the Hawaiian mm -hmm. language. We, and even though Chuck's adopted mother taught Hawaiian at Kamehameha schools, we were not good learners. Uh, I, but I will take time now to learn and, I, and my sister-in-law has encouraged me so mahalo nunui many times over for the joy and the blessings you are bringing to us today. Thank you. Mahalo, Auntie Siggy. Well, I, I am not at home for this this morning. And like Nani, I am technologically very, very challenged. If you put anything different in front of me called a computer, I don't exactly know what to do with it. And I just about five minutes ago figured out how to put my picture on. But I have been here. And if you've noticed that I was named Dan Swift, it's because I'm on his computer. I had a meeting at Windward Community College early this morning and um, being out it was going to be problematic to getting home and on this and so Dan said he would just put me on in one of the classrooms. Um, you're, you're talking about how to stay happily married for so many years brings back a, a, a long ago memory. Mr. Borthwick of Borthwick Funeral Homes lived on Wiley Avenue. And every day on my way to Kamehameha or my way home, I passed Mr. Borthwick's home. He had one of the most beautiful monkey pod trees in the, the state. And when he was 100, the, the Star, Bulletin ad, um, Star Bulletin interviewed him and asked him what the secret to his long life and his equally long marriage was. And he said, um, well, when my wife and I were married, we made a pact that if she got mad at me, I would go outside. And that if I got mad at her, I would go outside. Spent an awful lot of time outside, he said. <laughs> and so maybe Chuck's having four wives has been <laughs> helpful in, in maintaining your long marriage. It's been a wonderful, wonderful experience, Chuck. And I have to say, looking at the faces of our Kui Lama alumni here today and seeing receding hairlines and gray hair and a few more pounds than they had when we were hiking, um, makes me realize that there has been a passage of time, but to you students, you will always be the most wonderful teenagers I've ever known. I've been retired 20 years and I miss it every day. Thank you. Love you too, Auntie Siggy. And now we have Melissa kallstrom Beatty. Oh dear! He was president when I was in uh, when I was a freshman. So please take it away, Melissa. Oh, you're on mute, Melissa. I think you have to unmute, Melissa. Thank you. I got it much for this opportunity, Rosie and the committee, to um, honor and tribute Doc and Auntie Clara. This is just so wonderful. Um, I was in Huilama from 1990 to 1994, and such amazing, amazing work was laid forward um, and laid with the foundation of service and leadership, but most importantly, I think that Doc and Auntie Clara echoed uh, just the need of relationships, you know, with that. And so I have just amazing friendships that have become lifelong friendships now. You know, of course, with Sigrid, we, um, we <laughs> had many, many um, uh, titles, you know, for, for each other. We would call people mom or dad or Doc or, you know, and we would get such strange looks from people when we were out in public, you know, and, and they do double glances. So um, I just want to thank you again, Doc, for, you know, what 
whether it be the trips around Oahu, whether it be the trips and of course Koholawe and arranging um, with of course uh, Mr. Mills and um, mom for the um, interaction with Nainoa. And that ultimately um, resulted in an internship for me for college and just, just amazing, amazing opportunities. So thank you again so much that <laughs> um, Auntie Halani, you know, of course, is very, very active in our community. And I, too, am taking on the charge and enrolled in Hawaiian language, too, It's going to. Um, but thank you again so much to the both of you. And it's just, uh, you know, this isn't goodbye. And it's um, just I love you and I would love your mailing address so we can stay in touch. Because um, I'm pretty good with regular old school mail still. So I love sending letters. So we love you. And thank you to everybody that has been a part of this Zoom today. And it's been so good reconnecting. Thank you. Aohi ho. Go, Terry. Mahalo, oh, Melissa. Aloha, Doc and Clara. It's so good to see you. Aloha. <laughs> From hey, Connecticut. Um, I'm in Massachusetts now, yeah. Um, in the Connecticut River Valley. In Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, Chuck, when, when we first started working on solidarity with Kanaka Maui and the Gwich'in, we had no idea I would be moving to Hawaii, but I just wanted to say mahalo nui for everything. Um, somebody typed in the chat, you know, mahalo for your wide welcome, for your, your inclusivity. I, I look back at some of the times and places that I've, you know, been be able to be present with you, going to Kaho Olave, you know, helping with all kinds of things that maybe I had no place doing. But I think you taught, you taught and you continue to teach the ethic of give what you can where you can. And, you know, those years when between working at Group 70 and going to seminary and just volunteering so much in the marsh with you, Doc, and, you know, walking with Uncle Ryan, Clara, you'd come by and just say, I accidentally got an extra chicken at Costco. <laughs> you know, <sighs> the care, the care that you gave that bridge so that now I have care of 100 churches here and I'm learning the Aina here and how I can give back. And just please know that all the aloha you have given me and all of us who are here today and those who cannot be here, um, I know it continues to just spread this network of, of love and care wherever we go. So thank you so much for the ways that you have taught. Thank you. I love you. Um, Papa P'i Anaya, um, please feel free to share I, I um if you have your video on um please put on your video and i can also um highlight you or you can just talk oh there oh, you go okay. can you hear me yes hello yes. Oh, what a great great morning uh saturday morning and i'm so happy that kaylee posted that thing to join uh this wonderful group it's so good to see uh chuck and Clara. I know all of you, but uh, I want to share that this guy, Andy Berard, when I was an underclassman, was a big brother to me. So he helped to shape my life at Kamehameha uh, during the years of the school for boys. He was a tough guy, you know, but uh, I loved it because it was like the Polynesian system of growing up where the older siblings were responsible for us young guys and gals. And that's one of the things I appreciated going to Kamehameha. I'm growing up in a family unit where the teachers were there, but it was the upperclassmen that, uh, that really uh, honed us uh, to become better people in our lives. It's too bad they had a separated boys' school, girls' school, but that's okay. I made up for it later on. Uh, Chuck and Sig, wow, uh, great faces uh, this morning. Uh, Chuck, this is for you. I I told my I told my son uh, don't bother me I'm going to be on this Zoom thing which I know nothing about. Uh, there's a couple that are leaving the islands. 
Uh, they're leaving the islands and they're moving to Kansas. And and my son goes, well, who is that? I said, it's it's this guy, Chuck Burroughs, who's, who's a, a pillar at commandment schools when I was up there. And he says, wow, geez, there was another pillar at commandment schools and he came from Kansas. And we know who that was, Dr. Mitchell. Oh. So Chuck, Kansas loaned us Dr. Mitchell and now Hawaii's going to loan Kansas, Clara and Chuck Burroughs. And I wish you both the best in, in life. And I love you guys. And Poonani Anderson, I remember uh, at Valna Hele, Chuck would meet us up there and this young, exciting gal was with Chuck and that was Poonani Anderson, who it's so good to see her this morning on the screen. So love you guys, safe trip, and you're in our hearts. Mahalo. Ah. <laughs> Wonderful. That curve. Aloha, okay, Doc Herb. and Clara. Aloha. <laughs> um, <laughs> First of all, I just want to say mahalo kia kua uh, for just the opportunity for uh, us to know each other over the over these years. Um, you know, I can't exactly remember when we first met. I know it was decades ago, but um, I just wanted both of you to know that, you know, you have always been um, a source of inspiration and light in my life. Um, in, you know, this I know work is very challenging, as you know, and, um, you know, many times I wanted to give up uh, myself to, to be, to be truthful. And, um, but, you know, Doc was one of a kind. Um, and so I just wanted to let you know, you know, our, I'm not going to get into any, all the all the, the things that all the ways that our paths have crossed over the years but um i just wanted you guys to know that um you know you have been that light for me and you know i've always seen you know the the, the holy spirit in you guys in your life and everything that you do and that aloha is i'm still discovering as our kapuna have taught us you know that there are increasing depths of aloha that we learn about every day. And so Clara, when you mentioned, you know, it's not about the days, how many days we have. It's about the depth of the days that we live. That is so profound to me. And even, you know, you guys are still teaching me just like just a few minutes ago with that manao that you shared. And that is so true as I begin to think about, you know, succession in 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 the world that i'm living in right now and how you folks have you know continued to share that light with others so that others can be guided by that light um so mahalo 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 on behalf of the pacific american foundation and our ohana and you know i also wear other hats you know our our pohainani ohana uh we really missed you guys over there and in that short time, you were able to totally, you know, um, transform the grounds of Hawaii, <laughs> you know, with your, just your diligence. And that was you, you know, we, we enjoyed, uh, you know, the, the time that we had, you know, at Pohainani sharing, you know, with the other kupuna, uh, you know, music, everything, you know, so just mahalo, mahalo. And, uh, God bless, you know, uh, to you folks, and may that light continue to, um, you know, shine on in other people, because we still, the need is still great, as you guys know, right, and uh, we still got work to do, so um, just may the Lord bless you, and, uh, and I will, I pledge to you that I will continue to try to live, you know, days that are meaningful, and, and, um, with, with as much aloha and depth as possible. So mahalo and thank you for inspiring me again. Take care. Aloha. 
Aloha, Dr. Nancy Clara. So good to see your faces here. Oh. I remember the I remember the the days at the very start of the Ahahui Malamai Kalokahi when our meetings would be at your beautiful house on Kaohinani uh, in Lehuanu and and I and I too thank you Lehuakona for uh, remembering that we would be well fed at those at those meetings and and have our our minds well fed and our stomachs full when we took on the many issues that we were discussing there, whether it was Kwainui or Kahoanave or the Kwichin in Alaska or advocacy of, of Hawaiian approaches to conservation. Um, that was an, an awesome time and something that I will always remember. It was my, it wasn't necessarily my introduction uh, to you, Doc. I mean, I've been with you <laughs> on Kaho Olave. I've been with you on Pu'ukukui. I've been with you on Hui Lama uh, in Rapa Nui. Um, I remember helping in secret with Randy Bartlett arrange for helicopters to take all of the all of the haumana up to the summit of Pu'ukukui so that it would guarantee that they would be able to visit the Pico of that amazing place. Um, and so just the opportunity to work closely with you um, in the building of, the, of, uh, of your legacy, because those students, we've seen so many of their faces and they're in positions of responsibility and teaching and conservation um, today. Uh, and uh, so many of them look to you as I do, um, as one of those amazing sources uh, that inspired so many people. So. Um, mahalo for that, and I'm so glad that I was able to to be here today. Offer the the kahea for Koenui. I remember, in fact, uh, standing in the cold of Nuuanu um, on our on our annual uh, ceremonies to to commemorate um, the the battle of Nuuanu there, and how you Doc would come there with uh, with a contingency of folks from Ahui Malama, and sometimes with the Women's Correctional uh, Wahine uh, and, and offer that kahea. And it would be such a, a familiar uh, kahea and I would be able to give the pane to that. And the people standing there would be wondering what that was all about. And they didn't know that that was the connection with Koinui um, and, and the good work together. Every time that I go to Napohaku now and stand in the shade of those trees that you um, initiated the plantings up there, uh, it is a sign to me that your legacy will be a long lasting one and that it is cer certainly not oh, um, I love uh, Auntie Clara that you are that you are taking up Hawaiian language because as Imi Loha, it is never um, the end of learning. It learning just goes on as we as we all as we all know. So my aloha to you. So wonderful to see you. I see the lei. Uh, around your necks, and I, I, it looks like the work of Waimea, Waimea Williams, Aoleane. It's from Kailua Hawaiian Civic Club. Ah, awesome. For which we are honorary members for life. Mm. And we mahalo them anew. Ooh, wonderful, Le Kamoi. Anyway, aloha to both of you. And uh, I'm already writing an email saying how much I enjoyed today's uh, gathering and hope that you did too. Aloha. Aloha. There's a cable. There's a cable. You're on, Miss Okay. <laughs> Hi, Doc. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about Zoom. During the pandemic, I always joined on my phone. So I could never, um, <clears throat> people could never see me. But I just, I'm retired now, but I want to talk about when I first joined Kamehameha Schools in 1986. I was a rookie teacher and I was working with Doc and somehow I got roped into helping with fundraising for Hui Lama. So we had all the candy boxes and all that, but then Doc wanted to do Kalua Pig, the real way, the traditional way. So. I didn't know what was going on, but I had to go after school, jump on trucks. We'd go out with these really strong Hui Lama um, boys and they'd be getting keawe wood and getting banana stumps. And then they had to do the emu at school. And we were all 
sleeping in the intermediate school gym because we were gonna wake up at dawn to start shredding the pork and all that. And I remember that I was going, what am I doing? But I was there and everybody was sleeping and doc, you were snoring so loud that the teachers were rattling and I was going, oh my goodness. And so I ended up asking somebody, can I just go home for two hours? So I went home just so I could sleep. And then I came back and then we did, we did the whole prepping of everything else and that was the introduction as a first year teacher. But it made a lasting impression on me because we would, um, we would incorporate these hikes into regular biology and service projects. And we'd, we'd be going down to the nursery uh -huh. and planning things. And what, what it taught me was that if you have a passion for something, you have to keep at it. And there's no such word as no, you just keep going and you do the right thing. Even if nobody else thinks it's the right thing, you do the right thing. And so even though I retired three years ago, mm. I'm continuing to do what you taught me, Doc, oh. and that's to continue to give back. And I'm sitting here in Paki 308 at Kamehameha Schools because I have to help kids after 12 today. But that's oh. because of you, Doc. I love you, always have, and always will, and I'm your proud wife number three. <laughs> okay. If you don't follow me, well, hello. Steve, um, you're up next. If you show your video, I can spotlight you. Uh, are you talking to me? No. Stephen Montgomery, Steve oh. Montgomery, and then we'll have Auntie Siggy again. Can you hear us? Uh, Steve, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, somehow the video isn't on. I don't know why, but uh, okay. just go with with the uh, audio. Thank you, Anita. This is Steve Montgomery, and um, we heard brief mention about the, the Gwich'in, and let me say that it was Doc Burroughs, who came up with the idea that we needed to go to Alaska to accept the invitation of Jonathan Solomon, chairman of the Gwich'in Steering Committee, who lives in Fort Yukon. And uh, the, on, the invitation baby. meant we would be going to Old Crow in Canada for a three-day gathering and be fueled with caribou stew and all kinds of other new uh, ex culinary experiences the reason the invitation came is that Doc had been helping the Conservation Council for Hawaii and other groups like the Ahui to, to host speakers from the Gwich'in, speakers like Faith Gemmel and Lucy Beach and Peter Solomon. And it just, just seemed that uh, to, to save their food supply, they decided because the food supply came from the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge the calving grounds of the caribou, they should go to states where they needed the support of senators and representatives to save this public land because their culture depended on caribou for 60% of its protein. And they were alarmed that the oil companies were trying to get a lease to drill for oil there. Well, Doc partnered up with the, the Church of the Crossroads affiliate called the Church of the Midnight Sun in Fairbanks. And the day we arrived with Michael Bailey and myself and Doc to, to do a video documentary, an interview was held on the local TV news. And then the next night we were, we were one of the features about why uh, people were coming all the way from Hawaii to, to make this fact-finding tour. It was a great success because we, we camped with wildlife experts in the refuge itself after the gathering. We flew to Kaktovik and we went to the, the local church and were invited to stay in the home of Jane Akuchik Thompson. Mm -hmm. And we were able to eat seal blubber and learn yeah. the, their side of the story because they were among the Inupiat Eskimos who were believed the refuge should be a, a calving ground 
for a caribou and, and not an oil field. From there, we flew to the village of Nuixit and accepted an invitation to go to a, a uh, subsistence training camp for children. And <clears throat> while we were there, we spotted a caribou off in the distance <clears throat> and the children put their arms up like the antlers of caribou and this lone, lonely, horny male caribou ran toward us thinking maybe we were fe female caribou or something. <laughs> and Rosemary Tungaruk got her gun and met that caribou as it arrived and shot it. And we had caribou that night that was freshly delivered uh, to the subsistence camp. It was a, 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 an amazing experience that has resulted in a video and resulted in Hawaii's congressional delegation supporting the subsistence rights of the Gwich'in Steering Committee and the Inupiat of the North Slope of Alaska and Canada. And when I, I mentioned to Lucy Beach that you had been struggling with cancer, she sends her best regards and said, Masi Cho, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Doc, for your help on the public lands all over North America. Mahalo. Mahalo, Steve. Um, Auntie Sig, did you want to say something one more time? Yes, I did. I wanted to mention somebody who is not on this Zoom, but who wanted to be very, very much. I've been in touch with Angie Neller, Buddy's oh, wife, okay. and Buddy very much wanted to be part of this, but they are on a plane on their way to West Virginia today. And she wrote being very disappointed that the timing was such that they would not be able to be on. But uh, I know all the students on, I think, are people who will remember Buddy very, very fondly and uh, know that they would like to be part of this too. Thank you. I just want to say, Aunt Sigrid, that they contributed uh, a bunch of the photos that we saw earlier from Buddy. Yes. So we were very grateful for oh, those contributions. Wonderful. A lot of those older photos from the old Hui Lama days are from Buddy Neller. Oh, and today has been recorded, so we'll be able to share out that video if they wanted to watch. And I did just see, um, I think, um, Angela Neller on the Zoom call, so maybe they're listening, um, but maybe not able to, to, to speak up. Oh, Randy, well, did that, you want to? That would be good. Yeah. And, and so thank you to everyone. And as we coming to a close, I <clears throat> wanted to put out a, 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 a request to people. Uh, one thing we are seeking to do and we've been working on for years uh, is to put together a special edition of the Hu Lili, which is the journal that the Kamehameha Schools puts out, uh, dedicated to the work and the influence of Doc Burroughs. And so we have been collecting and that's why I have some of those written uh, responses from people that we've collected over the years. Um, but if others of you are interested in writing some of what you've just said down, sending it to me, sending it to Rosie, sending it to Aurora, we would really appreciate it um, from both the Hui Lama aspect, but also the Aho Hui and also the, um, you know, the yeah. other work that Doc has done and been an influence. So we may be reaching back out to you guys by email. <laughs> Hopefully this has inspired some of you and you might be willing to put some, you know, hands to keyboard and uh, um, put some things down for us. We have some stuff, but it would be wonderful to get this richness of experience and, and stories, the mana'o that all of you have. So I just want to sort of put that in people's minds. Mahalo. I, I know we're kind of winding down, it sounds like, but I didn't have a chance to say hello. Um, is it coming up? Am I coming up on screen? Okay, great. Um, hi, everybody. Hi, Chuck. Hi, hi Clara. It's been ages. And, oh, uh, Lily. Yeah. Evanson. Evanson. Hello, Lily. Hi. Hi. <laughs> but, um, I know I've been seeing you off and on in Foodland here in Kaneohe, but it's been like a little while. And I just wanted to jump in and say thank you for everything. Um, Chuck, I don't know. I, I don't, I can't call you Doc because everybody calls you Doc and I met you and you were Chuck. So it's going to stick. I hope you don't mind. Um, I just want to wish you all the best in your future um, endeavors. And let me tell you, Kansas is cold. Have you been there during the holidays? <laughs> it will be coming up. <laughs> <laughs> it's we, had very... snow. we had snow flakes yesterday. Oh, so... are you there? Are you in Kansas now? Yes, we oh, arrived. 
Yes. Yeah. So you're going to get a lot of change. Um, I was there for Christmas in 2015 and there was a big snowstorm. So you'll get to put on your um, winter gear and make snowmen and all that, <laughs> something different. But um, I would like to share a memory. And I remember when I was working as a lab assistant and it was very interesting because there were five science teachers and I was the Indian and they were the bosses, they were the chiefs. <laughs> and of course, uh, Chuck was very good at making sure he got his time as a chief. And there was that middle storage room that got converted. Now I think it was Gail's, one of her science rooms. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> that middle storage room had papers and books and boxes of stuff um you know they were plant pressings from dr mitchell donald mitchell mm. i don't know if you remember that but you had me go in there and clean up <laughs> <laughs> because you needed to you know use some of that space and there were things from teachers from decades i don't know century <laughs> beforehand. I don't know if you remember that, but I had a lot of fun doing the job. Um, and uh, you're a great director. Thank you for all those Hui Lama trips that you included my husband Pono and I on. And um, just jumping back to a snoring story. Everybody Sigrid was telling me, Oh, you know, we're at Hana, right? Why not Napa or somewhere? in Maui and um, <laughs> we were in this great big, like a gym and everyone was saying oh doc snores and I go no 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 problem and this gym was full of beds you know I think they used it for campers right and sure enough <laughs> early in the morning we're all waking up <laughs> so thank you for your um, friendship and just all those years of working in the science office and the banter that went back and forth um, after classes at the end of the day and just teachers unwinding, you know, just getting things off of our chest and sharing. And um, I jumped back to the, the seal blubber. That was the only time I ever tried seal blubber. Someone had brought you a big jar full of it and you had it in the center table where everybody used to share their snacks and uh it was it was very amazing it was just it was so rich so it was like drinking like pure corn oil or something <laughs> with fish flavored <laughs> but it was a wonderful experience and if it wasn't yeah, for you, you are funny <laughs> If it wasn't, well, everybody's, you know, so sincere and so serious. So I figure, well, they can do that. <laughs> I'll do this. But I just remember a lot of happy memories. And it's wonderful to see, you know, all these familiar faces and hear Steve Montgomery and Sigrid, you and Gail and Rosie and <laughs> oh, too many, too many people, too many people to, to mention and Sam. Um, and I'm so glad that you've been able to connect this part of the world um, and connect us. I think that's the most valuable thing, you know, the connectivity. And I just hope you can continue that. <clears throat> okay, it must be, are you getting tired of listening to us? <laughs> is no, is just... there anyone else willing to speak? <laughs> yes. Can I share as well? Oh. Hello. Oh, I'll jump in after. Okay. Okay. Oh, hi. Oh, Aloha. hello. Aloha. <laughs> Dr. Chuck and Clara, uh, we'd like to uh, thank you and bid you a farewell. Uh, you. Hopefully you're uh, getting acclimatized to Kansas. <laughs> and uh, we love you very much. Thank you for uh, blessing us and being our friends. And man, so many accomplishments that you've done that we weren't even aware of. You know, it's like a time in life that uh, we miss because we just didn't meet you early enough. But uh, you've been such good uh, friends and blessings and such mentors to so many people and youth and uh, the Aina in Hawaii is like uh, awesome. 
you know, you're a godsend to so many people. Yes. You know, we wish you all the best, you know, and uh, all the best of health and enjoyment in life and uh, to enjoy your family there. Uh, and uh, we miss you here and uh, we hope you come back uh, soon to visit, you know, and uh, I wanted Rosa to at least uh, say her farewell because I know it's hard to keep her to not speak <laughs> no. and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a speaker so she can no. go ahead and no, you said it all well I just I'm overwhelmed. It's beautiful, beautiful life. I'm so yes. honored and privileged to have known you both and to know more about what you've done is amazing so oh, mahalo. oh thank you thank so you much. and our hugs to kathy and all her family exactly. and to you too kathy we love you too and your family our regards take good care take yes. good care Hello. and as we say a hui ho to everyone oh, till we meet again mahalo. Yes. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for thank you so uh, doc and clara is there anything you would like to say some last word before we close yeah your last words well uh, i'm grateful uh, with gratitude that the mission of caring for the aina malala pono will continue uh, not only in Hawaii, by those individuals and organizations I've been associated with, but also here in Kansas City, Kansas, uh, when we make uh, further contacts here, um, we will always be in, in touch, although physically distant, uh, through the emails of social media, and we'll continue this connection, communication, and contacts. So, mahalo nui loa to all of you. Mahalo and ahui ho. Ahui ho. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. This ends on Oh my kai for Doc. Mahalo. We'll be in touch. Aloha. 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 Good to see you, Jack and Aloha. 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 Mahalo. Aloha. Thank you for everything. Thank you Thank for you. bringing us together. Aloha, Mahalo. Love you all. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Mahalo, Randy. Mahalo, all of you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> see you Love you all. You're wonderful. Aloha. You look so wonderful. Do take care. <laughs> Beautiful. 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 Aloha. Aloha. Beautiful. Aloha. Beautiful. Aloha. 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 Love you. To everyone. Oh, oh, Be well, be warm. And stay connected. Stay warm. Hey, buddy. Aloha, buddy. We'll see you in the dark. Aloha, Benton. We just got off the airplane. Well, thanks for joining us, even though it's a little late. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Buddy, we promise we'll share with you the video and you can see it, we'll post it so others can um, can watch it too. Say aloha. Aloha, hui ho. Hui ho, aloha. Mahalo. Kili, you wanna end the... Recording and I can edit or Rose is can. the only one who can end the meeting. Okay. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll... Kelly, can you stop the recording then? Thank you, Kelly. Mahalo. Mahalo.